the first thing that I can remember is lying with my head against the door and playing with the um, playing with those door stopper things. And I found that if I could put my head against the door and actually pluck on that thing, it had this huge bass reverberation, uh, which I found just fantastic. as a kid to a giant bucket of screws that screws and nuts and bolts and small metal bits to stick things together. in it and it actually floated for about five minutes, I'm proud to say. Um, unfortunately, my little hands at that time didn't have as much skill to bend the nails in the wrong direction and I think one of the tubes punctured and down I went. Sister Spencer, uh, I've often thought about what, I'm kind of obsessed with wheels that came to my attention. <laughs> Your cemetery, smoke your cigarette, you've had your best run yet. Turn my life into a pile of sure I was a bird or two, but yeah, I made a few mistakes. Life has been endless. Wake up in the morning, set the coffee kettle boil and pull the cobwebs from your head. Stretch them on the fretboard of all this sad, sad pity. Hide it down and take me pretty. I'm looking pretty wise and tight. Everything will be alright. I think from an early age, building things from what you had in front of you, using what you, we've all got to use what we have and not sit there and wait around until we've got what we think we need. Thank you. 
actually, I, I was thinking about guitar strings, you know, on a fretboard. Divide a fretboard, divide a string in half, and you've got an octave. And I thought, uh, why keep it in the confines of, of that fretboard and that, that 12-note scale? What if you just take, took a string and fucking stretched it way across the room and wherever that happens to be, pluck that string, whatever tone you've got, that's your first tone. screen and people have come out from their television scenes to see something live well let's see the guy jump out of the TV and come walking around the room and say hello to you there's something strange going on
black lander dances with the ridge runner. Mrs. Wrong, she's kissing Mr. Wright. Wowtown is kind of a utopian small town village, uh, if you will. It's um, it's a floating island in the Atlantic. Uh, maybe it will flow into the Pacific soon, and uh, uh, animals talk and um, conflicts happen. It lifted itself up out of the U.S. and dropped itself in the ocean and said, "We're we're disconnecting ourselves from um, from this mess." and it's a fantasy, and when I go there, it's, um, it's a relief. Cause there's a Inside the internet um, is, and other songs that I do, they are singer, singer songwriter, guitar songs, and I think people are often surprised by this because a lot of people um, hear about my shows and come down because they've heard, oh, he makes all his own instruments. The truth is, um, I sing and play guitar, um, you know, quite a large deal of the time, and it. What I often hear after after the shows is, oh well, you actually write songs as well, and you actually sing fairly decent songs. I used to have these friends, but one day up and went inside the internet. You can be in contact with people you know, but much as telephones, text messages are the same as well, you can, um, the more filtered it is, the more chances there are that misunderstandings can occur and misimpressions can be delivered. I always think if you, if you have something important to say to somebody, you need to think about it before you say it, just to make sure that you're understood. Their voices are memories, their emails like
like letters from across the sea. Um, I may be reacting against modern technology and uh, all the trials and tribulations that puts me through when uh, when I do what I do, but I I'm really I'm really just loving what I do and having fun with it. Uh, I think. I think that you can analyze it and break it up uh, and look at it and say, why, why is he doing this? Um, and yes, there may, be some, there may be some deeper reasons to it than just me having fun. Uh, I'm sure that there are. Uh, I think that technology is a challenge for us these days as, as human beings in this, in this messy world that we live in right now. And uh, and uh, if I can do things, do things, step backwards, slow down a bit, and say, um, what what are we missing here? What are we missing here in in our culture and our in our modern way of doing things? I'm not against technology, um, but what I do find is that uh, people are missing something tangible, and I, I saw this when I started doing what I do, that I, I was amazed as anybody else that somebody can come to a show and watch a wheel going around and I see people's eyes affixed on Sister Spencer and, and um, and quite impressed with the fact that I've basically just stuck some things on a wheel in it and as it turns around it it hits things and makes sounds. Mary Poppins likes to dance. Um, she's on a mic stand and mic stands vary in their stability and while it's fantastic that she gets into the swinging back and forth with the rhythms it's also uh, it, it also disturbs the rhythm. I, I kind of, I, I bit off more than I can chew to a degree with Mary Poppins because she's got an aerodynamic feature. Her, her limbs, her mallets fly up with centrifugal force as she spins around and uh, the weight of these spoons that hit these things as she spins make her sway back and forth and there's a, there's a perfect point between the mo motion uh, where it looks great and it sounds great between that and where she swings a bit too much and, um, and it throws off the rhythm. I, I often travel around the, um, the country on the British rail system, which is um, a mixed thing. We apologize for any inconvenience. I always say inconvenience is too mild a word for a lot of people in these circumstances. Um, Thank you. 
New York's a fantastic place, but um, I think I stayed there a bit too long. It took me a long time to learn that um, the place that you're in might not necessarily be the right place for you at the right time. Out on the road I met this butterfly. She had this fantastic wingspan, almost two feet wide. She'd recently been injured and she could not fly, so she asked me if she could bum a ride. The initial inspiration was a, a dream. Um, I woke up from a dream in which underneath the seat of the car that I was in, in the dream was a was a giant butterfly and I don't know what it means in the context of the dream. I, I, I only had that much of a glimpse of it except for that I felt this sort of desperate feeling of this beautiful creature being stuck in my car somehow and injured. <laughs> Her head cocked forward. She told me her story. 
story, a price was on her head. This bastard entomologist pursued her liver dead. He vowed to hunt her down and to claim a large reward. He captured her and drugged her and he nailed her to a board. So uh, unlike, say, a song like the Internet song, this was something that came together, literally the whole concept for it, and this is rare, came together in maybe 20 minutes. Um, I basically had the, the essentials for that song together. Uh, the Butterfly song, I think I labored over for maybe four years. Her escape was narrow. She'd torn through her own wing. She saw my look of horror, and she started to sing. I'm going to a no man's land because men and violence are intertwined. I'm going to a no man's land because men and violence are intertwined. I, I've realized over the body of work that I've done over the years that there are a lot of songs about animals and nature and I've got songs about trees and communicating with animals. I think again this is kind of a subconscious way of me realizing that in a technologically, technologically heavy world that we're in, uh, I think there's a real need to com communicate with nature. Well, I see, I said, but not all men are violent. I'm not a violent man myself. She laughed and said, try not to get too attached to me, because soon I will be well and I will fly away from thee. One afternoon when we stopped into a diner for a meal, she laughed and laughed about the plastic flowers on the table. She watched the birds and tumbleweeds with fondness and with envy. I started seeing through her eyes the passing desert scenery. We came across some sad roadkill, a beautiful coyote. She sighed her butterfly sigh and once again sang softly. One morning I came out of this Texaco station and I saw she wasn't at the car anymore and I figured she had run. But then I heard her high squeal and I heard his low laughter. You'll never outrun me, he said, you are the girl I'm after. I chased down their voices to the side of the station. She was cornered between a wall and a soda machine. I moved as if by instinct. I did it without thought. I clipped him and I kicked him and I grabbed him round the throat. I pinned him to the wall and his eyes were bulging wide. I said if there's a next time, I will see you crucified. And with this, I released him and he crumpled to the ground. The butterfly was gone again when I turned around. But then her little song drew our attention to the sky. Though with a certain lack of grace, she had begun to fly. That was the last I saw of her. She never waved goodbye. She just flapped off and disappeared while singing with a sigh. I'm going to a no man's land because 
on to that. Hold it really tight. It is a nice night. It is a Saturday night in London. Thank <laughs> you. 